So I'd like to talk about magnetometers. This is my Shen drone thick frame uh, running iNav firmware. This is my Maytech M9M, latest from Maytech for GPS and compass, integrated compass uh, modules. I have 3D printed this little trunk that's sitting out in the back like so many others do. It seems to be a good thing to do to keep this sensitive item away from all the rest. Now, that is what I want to talk about. We read, maybe you've read this, that the magnetometer is incredibly sensitive and you should keep it away from not only devices that are putting out a lot of uh, you know, magnetic fields, but they even say keep it away from anything metal. So, wow, how bad is it? Well, check this out. I was uh, opening this thing up um, my 3D print I did in two pieces. You have to fasten it together and it kind of traps it in there. So it's kind of whatever. Uh, I started to take this out of here and I started to move it around. And uh, I, this is just kind of interesting. It has a little bit to do with what's coming up here. So when I move this around, the, the, uh, the model here in iNav moves with it, just like when you move the frame around. And so you'd say, oh, well, that's, that's because of the accelerometer, right? Well, see, if I hold it still, it is the accelerometer, but it's also using the compass as well. So that's, that's in here as far as that thing rotating. So uh, could it be the GPS? No, because I've disabled the GPS up there because I want to try to narrow this issue down. The issue, I am having this, this toilet bowl issue, they call it, uh, where, where it starts to kind of wander off and, and basically drift. If you're having the actual toilet bowl issue, it will start to make a spiral and, and kind of run out here and then whip away because, uh, yeah, the magnetometer issues. So in the course of undoing all of this and seeing that, I went, oh, well, that's kind of interesting. I had my little old hex wrench right here and I was unscrewing it. And as I was doing this, oh, well, look at that. I get the wrench just close and you can definitely get it at different angles and cause different effects. So straight down here, not so much, but if I get it right around like so, it really has a strong effect on the, uh, the orientation of the craft. And if I get up here, so can you see just, you know, that, that's probably about 100 millimeters away or so, it's still moving. It's not super affecting it, but when I get down a little bit closer like this, it, it gets pretty bad. So. Jeepers, you know, what are you going to do about that? So maybe, maybe I need to make this come out a little bit more and, and get it up in the air, get it a little bit more away from this stuff. I have a power wire down here I'm kind of concerned about, but I thought it would be okay because it bends down when it connects to the battery. Maybe I got to move that. Maybe moving this up will solve that. I've got my video transmitter right here. So once it, everything gets powered on, send it on the bench, everything could be fine. But once you take it outside, you power it on, you get a lot more energy coursing through this. Maybe this is an issue as well. We are, you know, of course, you're kind of by the wires here, but you know, how do you avoid that? Maybe, like I said, I could get it up in the air. So, oh, and then how about this? Here, here's a screwdriver with a magnetic tip. Look at that. I'm not even close to the thing and it's already starting to, to mess with that. So, uh, man, very sensitive. And if uh, GPS and uh, compass are working together to try to hold your orientation, if you've got anything going on like this, of course you're going to have a problem. I've spun the motors around a little bit and I didn't see anything going on with you know the magnets moving causing a problem. But point is made, I guess. So the magnetometer is very, very sensitive. It is nice to see that, it, you know, to prove it out, to show exactly, you know, how sensitive it is, to give you an indication that maybe, yeah, you better really keep this thing away from anything metal and anything um, putting out any kind of magnetic field. Now, let me go down here to sensors and show you this. So this really brings it home. By the way, I am also um, strongly considering that these little fasteners might be the issue as well. And so maybe my cute little setup here, trapping this thing in, maybe I need to come up with something else. Now, I, I'm not really sure what to do because the other typical solution would be use the holes in the circuit board to you know nail the thing down and then I've got metal even closer, but watch this. So look down here, look down here at the magnetometer. So kind of focus on this, right? So if I move this around, you'll see that it moves. Now, let me, Give you just kind of an idea of what normal would be if i tip it a little bit then you see like the red and the greenish whatever you see those moving and here is yaw 
<laughs> wow, yeah. Um, here's here's pitch. And kind of can get some, uh, you can see some yaw motion there. So, so here's the thing to key off of. I'm at least 45 degrees here and we're coming up on the side here. I pitch back like this and you see it rising up. At no point does it really look like it's going to, you know, uh, bounce out of the graph. Now I'll grab my hex wrench again and watch this. Max. And it definitely depends kind of how I get it on here. But that's horrible. So you really, really need to, to be careful about what you have going on around this unit. And like I'm saying, it may really be possible that I need to even work with these fasteners. Here, what the hell? Let's show you one more thing here. So we'll go ahead and we'll unscrew this because I don't have one laying on the table next to me. Okay, here's my hand. Right, you can see, wow, that really messed it up. So here's my hand, uh, nothing, you know, no magnets in my fingertips, and it, nothing, nothing's going on. So now I'm gonna take this fastener right here and I'll move it around, and is it affecting it? It is to a degree, you see, but it's nothing as bad as it was. Um, this is interesting. Okay, I tap it, there's nothing mechanical in there. But if I bring this in and get it close, definitely have some stuff going on. So of course, if we, you know, we'll go around more down here low, we're gonna get a lot more action. Now, if, if this is just sitting there like that, is that a problem? Okay, well, it looks like it's pretty stable. Let me move it and see if it's different. Yeah, you see? So just by having this material close to it, it's getting an erroneous reading, which would put your heading just a tiny little bit off and it could definitely lead to some degree of that, that spiraling. So I guess maybe let's continue this. So we're gonna keep an eye on the blue and um, it's just a bit above zero. Was that me just grabbing the damn wrench? Okay, here we go. Let's let's pull these out and see if I see anything different. Oh man, that wrench is horrible to it. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll pull these out. Just get them all unscrewed. And we'll put the other one. We'll just set it here and see if this is not like the super best test in the world, but let's see. So they're all hanging out there. Let's let this get leveled out. I'm going to get the wrench the hell away from everything. Okay, and now that blue line is pretty much uh, just a touch above zero. We'll, we'll key up of that one and uh, green just a little bit above that. Now let's remove these really quickly. All right, so I think right here, that was a dip for me touching something. I feel pretty okay that these are not really causing an issue right now. I'm not positive. I'm gonna try some stuff, and if it still does it, then I'll get rid of these. I'll figure out some other solution for holding this together. Well, this doesn't seem uh, insignificant. If, if I move the motors here, I was just spinning them, and I thought maybe it's because I'm wiggling this, so let's, I'm gonna hold the drone down a little bit here, make sure it doesn't move. All I'm doing is wiggling the propeller back and forth, you know, just a tiny little bit, and I'm definitely getting something. Here, let's tap the frame. Yeah, here's me tapping the frame harder than I would be, you know, from moving the propeller. Here's moving the propeller back and forth through the magnets. Oh my goodness. Okay. So this is, this is gonna be a lot of stuff and maybe we can clip the hell out of this. So what do we do next here? How about we take this thing and let's prop it up higher and see what happens now. So here it is up here in the air. Wiggle the motors. I think this needs a rebuild. If, if, if maybe this works okay for a smaller quad that you're, you, you've got, um, 
you're kind of making amends, you know, you want to do some flip flopping around and, and that sort of thing. And having a GPS on a big tall post is is not so so realistic because you're going to break it. Well, this one's going to be more of a, you know, um, uh, an industrial drone is going to have tasks, you know, filming, of course, you know, but maybe, you know, doing some operation, it's probably not going to do a power loop. So maybe I'll stick this up in the air up here. Oh boy, I think this needs another test. I think I need to run another test on this. This video is going to be forever. Uh, what I want to do, I want to remove the propellers and um, power the thing up and see what happens. Okay, things are escalating. I've got um, a switch broke on the other thing. So I've got my X light here. I, I've got this going on. And I'm going to plug in the battery down here. So I have this set up. Uh, maybe we can zoom out a little bit there and uh, keep this kind of in shot right about there. So what I want to do, uh, what I want to show you here now is watch up there on the magnetometer. I'm going to arm the drone and see what happens here. So watch this. See that little spike right there? Okay, that's not as bad as it was. There you go, that's a typical, see that right there? So that spike um, is, is substantial. Now remember, considering if I just tip this thing a little bit like this, you see, there's, there's about the same, you know, magnitude right there, this, this tip, you know, that's, that's a good, you know, 20, 30 degrees, that's the same as that spike right there. Okay, so now let's arm this. And what I want to do is I'm going to set my controller down on the table so I can use all my fingers and toes. I'm going to lift this up a little bit and then I'm going to knock the roll off to the side over and over and again to see, you know, if we can make a little ripple there. Okay, so let's see what that looks like first. So we power it on and now watch. Okay, again, a fairly, a fairly significant uh, pulse right there, okay? So, if I lift this up, I'm just going to lift it up a little bit and kind of suspend it here in the air, just thinking that maybe that was actually some, actually some shake from the drone moving, all right? No. I can, I can repeat it here, floating kind of in air. It's, I'm resting my hands on there, but they're squishy, right? So now, I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to keep doing this. Get it down a little bit closer. There it is again. Bring it up, bring it up. And I think right here, pretty much immediately, this proves out why with all of the larger drones, you see the GPS magnetometer unit up on a pedestal way up here. These trunks, I think, are probably fine for maybe a freestyle one because you're making an accommodation between, you know, uh, getting kind of an okay signal and, you know, not breaking off your pedestal up there. But in this particular case, this thing is for work. So I think, uh, I think this needs to move. I think this needs to be up here somewhere. I think we need to, to make one of those types of uh, little, little, little towers that you see on a lot of the larger drones. So then what about this thing? What about this? Because I haven't tested that yet. So normally it's kind of folded underneath here with the battery down, down there. So, so how does this work? So I hit this, pop it. Okay, so there's our pulse. But check this out. This, this is having an effect. If I get this all, here look at this. We'll get a little coil up here. Yeah, no good. Now, I guess if it's in position hold, you're not going to be popping it. This is me, I'm hitting the stick all the way to, uh, to the end. Uh, so that's not gonna be happening, but you might be managing it a little bit. So here's me kind of managing it. Oh, do a little bit forward, a little bit backwards. It's definitely have an effect. And if I get this down and away, the effect is, is less. 
So we got to get this cable away. So this ESC right here, I think the power wire is going to have to maybe be soldered from a different angle and come around. Let's try this. Here, hold on. I'm going to stuff this underneath about where it normally would go. And, oh my gosh, sorry, drone. I'm going to keep this over here so the, so the cable is definitely tipped under, folded under as much as it possibly could. How bad's that? Still having an effect. So I guess the next test here, we've, we've got, you know, we've got between this and the black box log, I think this is a lot more instantaneous, obviously, than the black box log. We can try to figure out where our, our issues are. Look at that. that that's just horrible. So let's, let's bring Buddy up here. Oh yeah, that's, look at that, that's great. If I can get this thing like 130 millimeters away from the board, I think you're gonna be a lot better, which, geez, gosh, you know, coincidentally, that's about the size of those little, little towers that you get, you know, on the bigger drones. So, geez, I hope this was interesting. This was a really good test. I feel like there's probably some more things to test. I'm gonna turn off the camera and shut everything down, and then I'm gonna remember three more. So at least I feel I feel comfortable that I have done the testing and I documented it for anybody else to see and hopefully that's of some help to you out there.